one minute, second hour today that Mr. Puckett our, gives us a morning email every morning in the morning. It says it's a very patient day because everyone's really tired from the fall break and maybe stayed up too late to watch the football game. And I had to smile a little bit when I read the email because our first example today is kind of horrific. And it's going to be around the edit. How about that time? That's how we can get home. I feel like we're like on a even playing field today because I never sleep because my child never sleeps. And so I feel like for all of you that stayed up late, like we're like on even ground. Because I went to bed about 10 30. Then he was, the baby was up at 12 when the game was still on. And then he was up at 2, and then he was up at 4, and then we got up at 30 today. So, you know, I feel like we're on even playing field today. I never sleep. He's never going to sleep in this whole life. I don't know how children, like, babies are supposed to sleep a lot. Like, how does my child never sleep? And then during the day, he never naps either. He naps for, like, 20 minutes at a time. And I'm like, you should be napping for, like, two hours. Why don't you ever sleep? That's all right. I'll sleep later. Don't worry about it. All right. This chapter is actually pretty short. I was talking to uh, some people in the second hour that are going away next week for, I don't even know, FFA stuff. Are you going to be leaving for the whole week next week? Oh, my goodness. It's heartbreaking. But I told them we're probably going to have a test next week because uh, we really should finish this chapter Friday, like new stuff, and then we'll review, maybe have a worksheet. So we'll probably be having a test already uh, next week for, for the rest of this chapter. But they're just kind of long problems. That's why I broke it up into two tests. But today we're going to do some more stuff with conjugates and uh, imaginary zeros and how very exciting stuff. Uh, and I love the reason why. This is what the book says, the reason why, that we learned this. They can com provide the complete story about the zeros and factors of polynomials because you all care about the complete story. Yeah. One problem on your work day is like this, and it's like today my notes are backwards. Normally I start easy, and then they get harder. Today's like the worst problem ever in the whole world, and then they get better. So just keep that in mind before you start. They give us one complex zero, one minus two i of this function, four x to the fourth plus seventeen x squared plus fourteen x plus sixty five. They want us to find all the other remaining zeros and write as a linear factorization. So if one minus two i is a zero, what else do we know is zero? One plus two i. They come in pairs. Um, what do we do when we know when there's a zero? What do we normally do? Like if three is a zero, what do you do to find the other one? Divide it out, right? So, let's divide out 1 minus 2i. If it is, it's so much fun. 4, skip 1, so i got to put a 0, 2, 14, 65. We're not going to lie, this takes a little bit of work. And it really stinks if you multiply wrong or you add wrong, because then your work is for nothing when you get to the end, and there's no remainder of zero. Um, so be careful, is all I have to say. Trevor, are you thinking about this? No, sorry, I thought you were wanting to share something. Okay, ready? Ready for the fun? <laughs> Bring down my four. Then what? Multiply that, but I gotta distribute, right? Four times one is four. 4 times negative 2i is minus 8i. 
with me so far? What else do you want to do? And I add that to zero, that's just four minus eight i. With me to there? What's the next step I have to do? All of this times all of this, right? So I have to FOIL that. So when I do this on my paper, like over in the margin, that's where I do my FOILing, so I don't have to waste a bunch of paper. But I only have margin over here, but I'm going to say, say 1 minus 2i times 4 minus 8i. I got 4i. Don't do it if I'm not going to. Good news, there's only one of these on your homework. Better news, there's only one of these on your test. I distribute, I think I get 4 minus 8i minus 8i plus 16i squared. So this would become minus 16. So 4 minus 16 is negative 12. And negative 8i and negative 8i is negative 16i. You can't add i's to something without an i. So I can just add 2 plus negative 12 and get negative 10 minus 16i. Is that right? Right? Not a five. We could do that, but it's still a lot of work, right? And so, but we wouldn't just get five because we'd have to write it like this. We'd have to write x minus one plus two i and x minus one minus two i, kind of like that number six that we just did, right? And you'd have to work that all out and you'd get a quadratic, which we could then divide out, but you can't synthetically divide with a quadratic, so you'd have to long divide. But you could, and I don't know which is better, because they're both a lot of terrible work. But you could do that, but it's not as simple as just dividing 5 out. Does that make sense? But yes, you're on the right track. I thought you were thinking back there, that's why I was waiting for someone to know this, right? You following on that? What are you saying? That if, if 1 minus 2i and 1 plus 2i, instead of doing this, we could work this out and get a quadratic. But then we'd have to long divide, and I feel like people make lots of mistakes with long division, and I'm kind of already committed to this, so I'm going to stick with it. But it totally works. Some people choose to do it this way, and it works every time. Still a lot of work, though. Okay? If it was that simple, I promise I wouldn't make you do this. But good thinking. Um, what does that equal? Negative 13 minus 26i. Is that right? Now, some people take a leap of faith here, and they just trust that their math is right. Because we know that this is a zero, which means what should this equal right here? It should equal negative 65 so that we get a remainder of zero, right? Um, I would suggest that you actually check that it works because if you made a math mistake, you know, kind of take a leap of faith. Uh, but it really does work. Do you want me to do it? Everybody 
Remember that you cannot break up something under a radical with something outside of a radical. Also, you cannot just cross these eights out when there's plus or minus up there. So just be really careful with your simplifying. Um, we can write this as negative 8 plus or minus 12i over 8. And now here's where you have two choices to simplify this. For me, I've always just said, okay, all of this has a factor of 4 in it, so I could divide everything by 4. And I would get negative 2 plus or minus 3i all over 2. And I just always leave it as one fraction. But I've noticed over the years that a lot of people make mistakes when they're simplifying this because they want to cross these 8s out, but they leave the 12 there. 
So the other way you could simplify this is you could break this up as two fractions, right? Like you could think about this as negative 8 over 8 plus or minus 12i over 8. And you could simplify each one separately. And I'm not opposed to it. I just want to show you because some people make mistakes on this. So negative 8 over 8 is negative 1. And 12 over 8 reduces down to um, 3 over 2i. Both of these are acceptable answers. They're the exact same thing. One's just all one fraction and one's broken up. I don't care which way you do it, but I've just noticed lots of people making mistakes still with this. So I just thought I'd throw that out there in case uh, you're one of those people. Oh, the great thing is we're still not done with this problem because um, we're supposed to write it as a linear factorization, which means we take the zeros and we write them as factors. I'm going to go all the way back up here. We have zeros of 1 minus 2i, 1 plus 2i, and which way do you like it? All one fraction or broken up? All one fraction. We have negative 2 plus 3i over 2 and negative 2 minus 3i over 2. All imaginary answers. You with me on that? If I said give me the zeros, they would just do it. But in this section, they want you to write them as those linear factorizations, which just means you have to write x minus that, right? Just remember, like, if if 3 was a 0, you'd say x minus 3. This is just a little bit uglier. So to write my linear factorization, I'm going to say x minus 1 plus 2i, because I'm just subtracting everything, x minus 1 minus 2i, And I gotta subtract this whole thing too. So that's both of these signs are gonna change. That's gonna change to x plus 2 minus 3i all over 2. And x plus 2 plus 3i all over 2. Again, if you look in the back of the book on some of these problems, if they have fractions, they're not going to leave their answers like that. Like on this, they're going to multiply by 2. So I just want to show you that if I multiply by 2, that becomes a 2x. And then this just becomes 2 minus 3i. Right? If you multiply by 2, this 2 goes away, the 2 goes in front of there. And the same thing with this. This becomes 2x plus 2 plus 3i. Again, I'm not going to mark it wrong if you leave it as a fraction. But I just like to show you where the back of the book is for this. And it does look nicer without that. one goes on one. There's actually only five total amounts, and one multiple choice, and one's like yes or no. So it's not. And you fit all that in there. Oh my gosh. How do you guys get that? That's like so much. It seems like a page and a half to do that stuff. Alright. So that's the worst part. It gets better from here. Okay. It's up to you if you want to write all this down. But really, this is the word I want to make sure that you know. All right? Because the rest of your homework, instead of making you do a bunch of mess, we're going to write them as irreducible quadratic factors. So I'll just write them in case you want to. Uh, United States of America at the, at the end of this. It had to be United States of America, but I gave it to him for that. But now I want a visual carpenter so I can carpenter and use my pencil shape. So this is what this whole thing is. Okay, sorry. Um, every poem in the real fun.
function with real coefficients can be written as a product of its linear factors. We know that. That's linear factorization. And irreducible quadratic factors with real coefficients. So think about the last one we just did. Those did not all have real coefficients because some of those had imaginary numbers in them. So irreducible quadratic factors. If you see that, that means um, if it's not factorable, leave it alone. Which is super great compared to what we just did. Um, if you see a problem with the directions that say leave it as irreducible quadratic factors, once you get it down to a quadratic and it's not factorable, you just get to leave it alone. No more ugly answers. It all looks so nice. So let's do that for our other two problems. And that's two problems on your homework today. That's it. One ugly one, two nice ones, multiple choice, yes, no. Get that done in seven minutes. <laughs> Much faster now that you know what you're doing. Sorry. This is why we had to break this test into two chapter or two tests. Think about if I tried to get you to do all this on one test, it would never happen. So the directions say write the function as a product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors, all with real coefficients. That means don't give me ugly answers. And look what a lovely problem I gave you. How do we find the zeros of uh, functions again? What's that? Oh, geez. Yeah, what are those called? CRZs, right? And I gave you such a nice one that there's no number in front here. It's just factors of two. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two. And it's even better, it's a cubic. Those are my favorite problems because that means once we find one, we'll be down to a quadratic, right? If it was a fourth degree, you'd have to find two. So, let's just see what we got. If I plug one in here, I get one minus one minus one minus two. If I plug negative one in here, I get negative one minus one plus one. Minus two. If I plug two in there, I get eight minus four minus two minus two. I think I'm the only one that actually doesn't actually think correctly. You guys all have stuff to me. I think two works. Do you agree with me? What do we do after we find one that works? Divide it out. One, negative one, negative one, negative two. So what's left is x squared plus x plus one. Can you factor that? <laughs> what multiplies to give you one that adds to give you one? not factorable, right? Which is hooray for these directions. When it says irreducible quadratic factors, if it's not factorable, then you just get to leave it like that. And your answer is write it as a product of its linear factors, which would be if 2 was a 0, how do I write that factor? x minus 2, and it's irreducible quadratic factors. That doesn't work out nicely, so I just get to write it as x squared plus x plus one. Doesn't that look so nice compared to those other awfulness that we did? Thank you, sir. Let's do another one. Anyone have a question about that? I don't know what to do with you guys sometimes. Same directions, you have PRZs, what else is different about this one? This is a fourth power, which means when I see it to the fourth power, I know I have to find two that works before I'm going to get to a quadratic. It's up to you 
where you just want to keep checking until you find two that work, or find one, divide it out, keep checking after that. But you have to find two if it's third one higher. So factors of 12, again, over 1, so that works out nice. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12. And I'm just going to check them. Good news, after today's lesson, we're away from Pierre Beach for a while. Bad news, we're going to wrap for a bit. Better news, at the end of the week, we get to do one of my favorite things in math, rational expression. We get to factor and cross things out. But we get to that. Um, let's see. 1 minus 2 plus 1 minus 8 minus 12. 1 plus 2 minus 1 plus 8 minus 12. What did I do wrong? This is plus 1. Oh man, I did that in the second hour. The exact same mistake. I did it again. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hooray, negative 1 right. Do you want to divide it out or keep checking until we find another one? Nobody ever answers me, so I guess I'll answer myself. I'll just keep it. <laughs> Sometimes I w wonder which class I should have someone come in and observe me in, because second hour, like, they're out of control, they never stop talking ever. Even when I'm teaching, they're still having their own conversation. But they do answer me. And then you guys, like, I think I could just, like, fall down the floor and then two of them sit there and just wait for class to be over. And then when you leave, I'm done, like, oh, thank you for guiding me. And you're so wonderful. <laughs> It's a very weird mix here, kids. <laughs> that doesn't work, I don't think. I'm trying to remember. I think blue. Anybody find one that works? <laughs> Is anybody even checking? <laughs> this could be why you never answered it. Now, what do we do after we find two that work? Divide it out! Oh, children. And since I found both of them, I don't even have to rewrite it. Like, I can just keep this here like we did on the other one and then divide 3 out as well. Well, that one's just one step for both of them. So, again, I divide one out, it turns to x cubed. I divide another one out, it turns to x squared. So, I think I'm left with x squared plus 4. Can I factor x squared plus 4? Into what? x squared minus 4 I could factor, right? That would factor into x minus 2, x plus 2. But x squared plus 4, can I factor that? Think about if we solve that, wouldn't we get plus or minus 2i, right? So I don't think this is factorable. Yes, no, maybe not factorable, which means I get to leave it again, right? It's not factorable, which means I can write it with my other factor. What would my other factor be? X plus 1, X minus 3. X squared plus 4 is not going to factor, so make sure you don't make a mistake like that. And that will be your answer. If what you're left is factorable, then Obviously, you would factor it and write it out as all linear factors, but irreducible. The big thing that I want you to be aware of 
is pay attention to the directions because on the test you're going to have both sets of directions. Find all the zeros, which means work it out all the way to imaginary irreducible quadratic factors. You got to make sure you remember that. On a test, I won't tell you what that means. All right. I got one more thing to show you. It's not an example, though. It's just a statement. Okay. In your book, it says that every polynomial function of odd degree with real coefficients has at least one real zero. Every polynomial function that's odd has at least one real zero. My question is, why is that always true? Show it. imaginary numbers. How many do imaginary numbers always come in pairs, right? So do you agree if they always come in pairs, there's always that one extra one left over? That's how I thought about it. Uh, but yeah, that's genius with the arrows and opposite directions. I like that. So both ends just work. So you can think about um, because arrows go in opposite directions. Or you can think about it because imaginary always come in sets of two. So think about our first example that was a fourth degree. A fourth degree function could have no real zeros. They could all be imaginary, but that also goes to back to the arrow question. Like if both arrows point up or both arrows point down, they might not ever touch the x-axis. So I like that. Genius. That's going in my book. Writing it down. No one's ever gave me that answer before. Okay. You win a pencil. My sister made fun of me because 